So one of the ways to know that you're fighting the devil or the flesh is a voice. Is there something talking? Know your enemy. Alright, so this message is meant to equip you to be familiar with the devil's schemes so you won't be ignorant when it is the devil giving you war. This will help you spot the devil from a mile away. Right? Uh, so you need discernment to be able to even visualize the attacks of the enemy. Right? You, you, without discernment, without faith, right? If you can't see in the spirit, right, you're, you're gonna get sucker punched, right? You're gonna get you're gonna get punched, and you're not even gonna you're gonna be like, whoa, where did that come from? You know, and the devil like comes at you full force. You gotta discern, okay, he's coming from this side. So uh, you know, put on the whole armor of God, be equipped in the word, the sword of the spirit. That way, when the, the devil satarima, you have the dagger of the word, sas. You know what I mean? So look, first Peter chapter 5 verse 8 in English it says be sober minded be watchful your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour this is a common saying that I usually say I heard it I heard it from from David Wilkerson I don't know if you all know who that is David Wilkerson man of God uh, he says the devil is the hunter from hell the hunter from hell is the one that, that hunts the believers you know those that are that are in Christ Right, so like like lambs, this guy's a lion that hunts the lambs and, and wants to devour the lambs, right? It's pretty brutal, right? Those that love Jesus, those that are that are faithful to Jesus, those that are consecrated to Jesus, those that belong to him, that's who the devil's gonna hunt, right? If if the devil sees that there's somebody that's lukewarm, uh, he's not gonna be he's gonna be like, Well, he's already mine, I don't have to give him more. Whereas if, it, if it's somebody that loves the Lord wholeheartedly, if somebody loves the Lord and is devoted to Him and, and is being intentional with their life and, and is seeking after Jesus all the time, right? That's who the devil goes after, right? So whenever you experience some sort of spiritual warfare, it can be emotional, spiritual, mentally, physically, that's the devil giving you work. In a sense, it's a, it's a sign that, that you're alive spiritually because the devil's not going to waste his time on somebody that already belongs to him, right? So, the, the whole point of, of this, you know, message is, is to equip you, right? You can fight back, right? Only through the authority in Christ. Because without the authority in Christ, we have no, first of all, we have within ourselves no authority. Me, as in Carlos, I have no authority within myself. I only have authority if Jesus gives it to me, which he did on the cross. It is finished. You know, if Christ lives in me through the Holy Spirit, Therefore, I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places, and I have the same authority that Christ had on the earth, right? Jesus even said, the greater things you will do in my name, right? Mark 16, those who, these signs shall follow them that believe. They'll cast out demons, um, they'll heal the sick, right? All these miraculous things shall follow them. We don't look for them. Those things automatically should follow the believer, according to Mark 16. So, without without the authority in Christ, right? So, if, if I'm... If I'm if I hear about this in Jesus, but I don't know him personally, and I attempt to, to give the devil warfare, right? I'm basically poking a beehive. I'm going to get stung, right? That happened in the Bible in, in, with the sons of Sceva, right? So, the sons of Sceva situation will happen if we don't have authority in Christ. That means if we're lukewarm or we don't know Christ for ourselves, right? If the Holy Spirit does not have a home inside of us, it's going to be the whole sons of Sceva situation. I'm pretty sure we've all heard of the sons of Sceva. Uh, without the authority of Christ, you're poking a beehive like we spoke about, and you'll get stung if Jesus doesn't live in you, right? The demons knew Jesus and they knew Paul, but they did not know the sons of Sceva because they weren't really believers themselves, right? If we go to Acts chapter 19, verse 13 and 17, si vamos al libro de los Hechos, capítulo 19. Verso 13 al 17. Want to read all get it? Can I get an amen? It says here, uh, this is Acts chapter 19, verse 13 to 17. This will be quite a bit, but I'll, I'll read it for you. <clears throat> I can you say, a group of Jews was traveling from town to town, casting out evil spirits. They tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus in their incantation, saying, I command you in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches to come out. The seven sons of Sceva, a leading priest, were doing this. 
But one time when they tried it, the evil spirit replied, I know Jesus and I know Paul, but who are you? Then the man with the evil spirit leaped on them, overpowered them, and attacked them with such violence that they fled from the house naked and battered. The story of what happened spread quickly through all through Ephesus to Jews and Greeks alike. A solemn fear descended on the city, and the name of the Lord Jesus was greatly honored. So here we see that there's power in the name of Jesus, and the people that were in, the, in that area, they, they were afraid because they're like, whoa, this, this thing is real. This thing is legit. You know, uh, somebody that doesn't have authority in Jesus doesn't have authority over spirits, over any evil spirits, right? Because then they have, they have authority with, amongst themselves. And we in ourselves, as, as a human being, we have no authority, again, unless it's Christ that lives in us. Right? So, not only that, but there's also satanic devices that, you know, the devil uses that are not necessarily physical. Right? But they're mental devices, emotional darts that the devil manipulates with satanic poison to inflict your mind. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, it says, So that we would not be outwitted by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Right? In the context of that chapter, it's talking about unforgiveness, right? Because sometimes the devil will plant thoughts in your mind. Oh, they're doing stuff on your back. Oh, this is happening. And, and you're, you, you believe it. You, you buy into the lie. Meanwhile, the devil's like just putting your mind on a carousel. And it's just going around and around and around and around. And none of it's true. Because guess what? Satan is the father of all lies. So by default, if it's a demonic thought in your mind, it's, by default it's already a lie. Because who's the one giving it to you? The devil. Devil, the father of all lies. So that's one of Satan's devices. You know, uh, los dispositivos del diablo son mentiras, son dactos de, de mentiras en la mente, right? So that the, and those stars are not, they're not whatever little thing. You know, they're, they're inflicted with, with satanic poison. You know, things that will really get you going up here, right? So it takes discernment and you got to know the voice of Jesus in order for you to discern, okay, this is the enemy throwing darts in my mind and this is Jesus that's trying to convict me. Right? Because the voice of the Holy Spirit convicts you from sin. The voice of the enemy condemns you. That's the difference. The Holy Spirit convicts you from sin and gives you redemption, saying, turn away. Turn away, right? He doesn't condemn you. Where the voice of the enemy says, you're done. That's the voice of the enemy. That's how you're able to discern conviction, condemnation. Two different things. Right? So, the devil's primary target is your faith. Right? The devil tried to get Job to curse God. Job did not curse God, but bless his name, saying, He gives and takes away. So I'm pretty sure we all know the story of Job. I'm not going to dive into it uh, for the sake of time. But Job lost everything, and, and that was the enemy that went up to the throne of God. It says in Job 1, the devil approached, Satan approached God among, like, along other angels, the sons of God. And he asked God for permission. You know, let me inflict him and see how he curses you. And God's like, try it. See how, you're you're going to see how faithful Job is to me. Right, but that was the the goal of the enemy. The goal of the devil is for you to turn, to twist the character of God in your mind. Because if the devil twists the character of God in your mind, you're not gonna run to God. Because you're gonna be like, you're the one that did this to me, and that, the devil's like, ah, you fell for it. That was me. But you're blaming God, so I did my job. That's the that's the enemy. <laughs> right there's the enemy. Right. So the devil doesn't care if you worship him. His goal is to obstruct. And divide you in Christ. So the devil doesn't care if you turn to Satanism. The devil doesn't care if you turn to witchcraft. What the devil wants is for you to turn away from Jesus. Abandon Jesus. If you can get in the way and divide you in Christ. That's, that's the goal. That's his goal. Right? To attack your faith. And your faith. If you don't believe in God. Then who are you going to run to as well? The character of God in your mind. Right? So his, his goal and his target is, is your faith. Is your faith and your trust in God. That's the devil's target, right? So protect your faith. So, another thing, the devil fights brutally. To the devil, there are no rules as to how he'll attack the believer, but the believer in Christ has the threshold of divine protection from God, right? So, like we spoke about already, the devil will shoot all kinds of arrows at your mind, right? Accusations, temptation, he'll use the means of the flesh to try to get to you. The Bible says that nothing good dwells in the flesh, not, literal, not our literal bodies, right? But the flesh nature. Nothing good is in the flesh, right? So the flesh nature and the devil are on the same team. Except one talks and lies to you and the other doesn't. Right? So one of the ways to know 
that you're fighting the devil or the flesh is a voice. Is there something talking, right? The flesh doesn't talk. The flesh can entice and tempt, but it does not talk. Right, so if there's like voices in your mind, you know, lying voices that you know, you're like, oh, where did that come from? You know, like, that's, that's random. And rebuke it. That's how we fight back. We rebuke it with the word of God and we say, no, nope, in the name of Jesus. And you, you give the devil word back, right? So the devil or a demon will feel like if it's a hijack in your mind. When you're fighting a devil or a demon, it'll feel like you're fighting some strange malware that you don't know. An intruder, an intruder in the system. So your mind will be like, well, where, where's this coming from, right? You're like, so the flesh entices you with, with like stuff, but it doesn't talk. If you hear a voice up here, that's, that's, that's the evil spirit by default, right? So it says here, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil, in the heavenly places, Ephesians 6, chapter 6, verse 12. So, one of the, one of the things, wrestling in Bible times does not mean WWE. It does not mean the kind of wrestling that you see on TV. Wrestling in, in the Bible times meant you breaking fingers of the other person. It meant you biting. It meant you twisting and breaking limbs. It meant you, it was gnarly. It was brutal. It was gruesome and barbaric. That's, that's what Paul meant when he wrote, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the evil principalities, cosmic powers, dominions, thrones, right? All that stuff is, in other words, Paul is describing the brutality of the, the reality of spiritual warfare. He's like, it's not, it's, it's, this game is without rules. There's no rules, the devil fights dirty. Um, the devil doesn't care how he attacks you. He just want, he's trying to get you, man. Like he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna hunt you down. You know, whatever it takes. You know, there'll be like little like minds, like spiritual minds on the floor, um, spiritually speaking, right? Um, those are the devil's devices, right? And also like darks in your mind. We already went over that, right? So that kind of wrestling, it's not against like just like demonic entities that we face, right? But it's also the, the principalities over regions, right? Um, this is gonna be a little like profound, but there are dominions over certain areas, right? Uh, sometimes you might, Travel into it's happened to me where I traveled into like certain city or a certain region anywhere in the world, right? And I'm like, oh, that, that feels heavy, you know. It feels strange just being here, like something feels very, very odd, you know. And usually, that's that's true because I'll be in regions where there's like prominent witchcraft everywhere. They're selling dream catchers in the streets. They're they're selling like all sorts of like weird weird stuff like voodoo. And I'll be like, well, that 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 no wonder. <laughs> No wonder. And that's just God telling you, hey, like this region's infested, you know. Pray on the whole armor of God. Stay in prayer. Pray in the spirit, you know. Uh, there's angels around you. Psalm 31. He that abides in the shelter of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Right. So the princes of the air, in other words, the principalities, they were originally created to serve God. Right. They were assigned those regions, you know, to, to watch over the regions. Because um, the Bible does say that everything, creation, principalities, powers, they were all meant to serve God. But they rebelled against God and they turned away and now they're under the power of the devil. Because they rebelled along with the devil. You know, one third of the stars fell by the tail of the dragon, which is the enemy, right? So they were supposed to be the holy type of princes, you know, the, the angels in, in, the, in, the, in the heavenly realms. But since they rebelled, they... Uh, they turned evil, right? So, though we wrestle against the principalities and the dark forces, we must also recognize that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Therefore, we have authority over every demonic entity, but we must also use wisdom and not go poking every beehive we see, unless we feel the Lord leading us to do so. Uh, in the book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 19, through 20, el libro de, de Lucas, capítulo 10, versículo 19 al 20. Yo lo leo. I'll read it. It says here, Jesus said, Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you. 
but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. So what does that mean? That means that the spirits of the demons are subject to the believer because Christ lives in the believer. Therefore, since Christ lives in the Christian, then we as Christians have the same authority that Jesus has, right? I'm not going to say had because he's risen and he's at the right hand. He's not dead, right? So, for example, it's like if the authority of Christ that we have, <laughs> I'm going to use a funny analogy. So it's like if your dad has something, right? It's kind of ours too, <laughs> as a son. You know, if, if my dad owns it, it's kind of mine too, right? Because, hey, you know, um, even though you don't live in the same house, your dad will probably tell you what's mine is yours, right? So, back to the discerning the schemes of the enemy. One of the things that, the, that, the, that God will never do, God will never remind you of the sinful past. Though the lesson you might have learned might stay with you, right? So if there's a lesson that led you to repentance, the lesson stays, right? But God will never take you down memory lane and bring the evil back, right? That's, that's the tell of the devil, you know? The tell of the devil is that he attacks from the north. This, this is something I learned from a mentor that I had years ago, right? Um, he, was, he was very experienced in spiritual warfare. And I was under his mentorship for about a year, two years, and I learned a lot from him, right? John Ramirez, I don't know if you've ever heard of him. It's very, very strong testimony. Um, so, the devil attacked from the north, the south, the east, and the west, right? It might sound a little like, what? But just, just hear what I'm about to say. You know, when the devil attacks from the north, you know, that's, that's just a code name that we give it, the north, right? He inflicts you with anxiety or fear of the future. See the north, the future. When God's the one holding the pen of your story. Right when the devil attacks from the east or from the west, he's trying to to punch you all of a sudden like like a, like a sucker punch, right? Like a, that that means like it's a punch you don't see coming, right? It, it just like oh, where did that come from? Like and like you, you don't know where that comes from, right? So that means that there's some distractions or spiritual fights could be a number of things, right? So things come up suddenly and you're like, man, this is evil. Like where did that come from? That's the enemy attacking you from the east or from the west, from the side. Right, so the north means anxiety, anxious thoughts, like like that kind of stuff. Like you're worried about the future, right? Or from the east and the west, sudden sudden things come up, and you're like, well, distractions from the enemy, right? And from the south, he brings back your past to your mind, right? So he'll try to remind you of your past. You know, you, if it was a simple past, he'll remind you. That's the enemy attacking you from the south, right? He's trying to bring back former things of, of the past when God's like, I already forgot about it. I will never remind you of your past, right? The lessons, again, the lessons of the past that brought you to repentance might stay with you, but the, 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 the condemnation of the sin from the past doesn't follow you anymore under Christ. You're made a new creation, all things are made new, right? So God will never remind you of your past. In fact, it even says in Ecclesiastes, it is not wise to dwell in, in the good times of the past, right? In other words, nostalgia, right? It, uh, nostalgia is not of God, because it says in Ecclesiastes, it is not wise, right? Because God is trying to take you from glory to glory, from faith to faith, and nostalgia will only keep you in the past, right? And God's like, move on, man. Like, like this, this is over. This, this season's already, it's over, right? I'm trying to take you to other places, right? So, it says here, Psalms 34, verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. So, we're going to fight the enemy, regardless if it's the flesh or, or, or the evil forces, right? They're both in the same team, right? Those are the, the two common enemies. I think there's one more, right? But there might be many afflictions, many battles, but God promises to deliver us out of them all, right? So, also, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 9 to 11. So this just reaffirms the reality that everybody's going to fight a war, right? The road is narrow. You know, Cristo dijo que el, you know, um, el, el camino no, no está fácil, ¿verdad? Eh, va a haber tribulaciones, there's going to be tribulations, there's going to be hardships. That's, that's, a real, that's a reality that we as Christians have as, as, as believers, right? Um, and First Peter chapter 5, verse 9 acknowledges that. It says, resist him... In, 
Resist him, firming your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. So Peter right here is saying, hey, whatever is happening to you, you know, you might feel like it's a unique thing that's happening to you. A very, very bad thing, but it might be unique to you. Be like, I don't know anyone that's going through this thing. I don't know anyone that's, that's passing through the same thing. And right here, Peter says, don't be surprised. There's other people around the world that are believers that are going through the same thing. And sometimes we don't acknowledge that, that the things that we face are actually diabolical attacks. But somewhere, somewhere, I don't know, like remote, far off in a different state, country, city, maybe your neighbor, you don't even know, right? They might be finding the exact same thing that you are, right? So that's why it says to Peter, relax. You know, your brothers are going through the same thing all over the world, right? Maybe not the guy next to you, but the brother on the other side of the world is going through the same thing. So there's nothing that, like, that surprises God, in other words. Like whatever you go through, God's like, oh, yeah, that's, that's nothing new. You know, nothing new under the sun. Right? So, the verse that we just read, which is 1 Peter chapter 5, follows the first one that we read earlier about the devil seeking someone to devour, right? So, we spoke about how the devil hunts down the Christians, right? But we also, there's, there's a verse that presents a problem, and then the following verse presents the comfort. As in like, oh, the devil's hunting you. But... Don't freak out because he is something to everybody else. So in other words, you're not alone, right? So that's what the church is there for, you know, to, to help each other out in, in, in that sense as well, right? Not only for fellowship and, and, and for, for the gathering of the saints, but also to keep each other in prayer, lift each other in prayer, and be there for each other, you know? Love one another as I have loved you, in other words. So the reality is that we will face trouble, battles, spiritual wars, it's all part of picking up your cross and following Him. It will definitely not be easy, but we have the Helper who is the Holy Spirit. The Word says it's impossible to please God without faith. The carnal man cannot please God. So with the help of the Holy Spirit, now we're anointed and equipped to walk it out. We have authority over the power of the enemy. We're called not to be afraid, but to put our faith in Christ. But we're also told to be vigilant and not ignorant when it's the enemy sending arrows from a mile away. Right? So if we see the enemy coming from a mile away, we must be wise and use discernment on how we should go about it. In other words, do not be sitting ducks waiting for the hunter. Right? So in other words, what I'm trying to say in this message is that, you know, sometimes we might, we might see something and be like, ah, no se diablo. You know, like, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just what it is, right? No todos en diablo. You know, the, you, know people, you know people that say that, oh, that's not the devil. It's not always a devil. And the devil's like, are you sure? <laughs> you know, so that's, I'm, what I'm saying is, do not be ignorant of the evil attacks that might be satanic, right? You might be like, oh, that's so, that's so dumb, you know, that like, una gata ponchada, you know, or, or like, just little things, right? Or even then, some sickness can be evil, right? There were spirits of infirmities in the Bible, and there still are spirits of infirmities. So, there are infirmities out there that are, in fact, caused by evil spirits, right? But with the authority of Christ, we cast them out, right? But, I'm not saying every infirmity is spiritual, but infirmities can be spiritual. A lot of things can be spiritual. I'm not, I'm not saying everything that comes against you is the devil. But I'm saying don't walk it off if it is, right? Don't, don't, don't be ignorant. In other words, like the word says, do not be ignorant of the devil's devices, right? So, in other words, we're in the last days and the devil is trying to sift anyone he can to pluck them up like weeds. Stay grounded in Christ, fight the good fight, remain faithful to Jesus and his commandments. So, we're in the last days, obviously, because we see the evil agenda that's happening everywhere, right? In the movies, right, we're seeing all this homosexuality stuff being pushed. There's no coincidence. That's the enemy trying to go all out. People aren't even silent about it anymore. People are like, oh, yeah, it's there because we intended it to be there. There's, there's interview, interviews with Disney executives that are honest about it. They're like, oh, yeah, we, we, we kind of we put a little sprinkle of that in there on purpose. They're not lying anymore. They're not lying about it anymore, right? So that's the enemy just trying to go all out. And, you know, it's heartbreaking to see that there are some Christians, right? I'm not saying here, right? But in, in other churches, right, or in general, that that will support it. and be like, hey, what's wrong with that? You know, like, aren't we supposed to love one another? And God's like, that's, that's, that's not the type of love that I intended for you to have, 
right? That's, that's a twisted version. And again, anything that's contrary to the nature of God, anything that's contrary to God's original design is sin, right? So if God gave you an, an, an assignment and then God appointed something to, to do something, for example, God told the sun to shine. God told that God basically appointed the sun, you're going to be bright, you're going to burn, and you're going to provide light for my children, right? For the people of the earth, right? So the sun... I'm not going to say it, never mind. Um, but anyway, that was the message for today, guys. I was going to go somewhere else, but I just, I felt the Lord saying no, not yet.